All right, this is a how-to on uh, hand rubbing on a um, burst using a leather dye. And what I use is this Feebing's leather dye. Um, I got a bottle of black and a bottle of green. You can get it on eBay for pretty cheap. Um, and I've already started doing this one. Um, basically, I used you know the bottom of a cup like this, or you can use the cap for a spray paint or something to mix stuff in. What you want to do is my middle color, my base color is the green, and so what you got to do is yesterday I threw on a coat of green, and you can do several coats with it um, to get it however dark or bright you want it. And usually I put just a little bit of the dye in one of these cups, and then you can add water. Um, I added a little bit of water and a little bit of um, denatured alcohol. The denatured alcohol, if you use that without water, it tends to make it dry really fast, which I don't want. The water tends to make it dry really slow, which I don't want either. So I mix the two with the dye. Um, if you use isopropyl alcohol, it might work better. I've never tried it, um, but it's supposed to dry a little bit less fast. Anyway, so you mix it. Um, and what I use, I, I found this on a, I think it was a shoe polishing thing. Um, it's a nice little foam pad. I just got dye on my hand. Um, but I've also used, uh, actually it's a pair of boxers. You can use a t-shirt or whatever. And basically I just wrapped, you know, ripped a chunk off and laid it flat a square and then rolled some up, put it in the middle, wrapped it up and raised a rubber band um, and made it one of those. Um, but basically what you're going to do is once you get your green on there, you let it dry overnight, um, and then you're going to come back and do your second layer with your black. And it's tough to get it even. It really is. you got to work at it for quite a while. Um, mine's not right now very even. Um, but essentially what you're going to do is um, it came the, the dye comes with one of these little dauber things. And I tend to use that in the cup and then just kind of daub it onto my black thing here. But basically, you want to start out with your mixture pretty strong towards the, the black. Um, a lot of black dye versus the rest of the, um, the mixture. And so you daub it on. And what you want to do is start at the outside and do kind of a thin line around the edge. And what I didn't show you is I actually have used this spray bottle and got the wood kind of damp here. Um, that'll help it dry a little slower too. But then you're going to go around the outside and just do kind of a line on the outside. And you don't want to let it sit too long on that line or else it will leave a line. So then what you're going to do is it'll automatically go back around and probably double the thickness of that line. And I'm kind of rubbing it in a circular motion um, to kind of spread the dye out a little bit further. Um, And then start again, go a little bit further. Essentially, you just go around quite a few times, taking that dye just a little bit further each time. And kind of the goal is to not let any spots sit for too long, because um, then you will get lines in it. And you can go out as, as far as you want to you know, for the color. After that I have a piece of extra cloth here that's um, actually it's dry and clean. Um, and I'm kind of rubbing in a circular motion. You want to, when you're rubbing like that though, you want to actually be taking the dye kind of out towards the center and then bring it back in and it kind of allows it to fade, the color to fade out a little bit. And it's also drying the wood off um, at the same time.
and so you're getting the burst effect there and basically you can do that the longer you let it sit once you start getting it out there ways you can let it sit longer uh, before going around and the longer you let it sit the darker it'll get I prefer to kind of do it fast like that and then take it off see where it is and then just go over it again you can just go over it basically as many times as you need to get the color you want um, and to really get a dark edge once you get it going you can use the dauber kind of straighten the black or just with a th thick mixture and actually go around the whole edge and let it sit for 15 seconds or so and then go back around and wipe it off or rub it in with you know kind of a wet one you can kind of just kind of do circles and stuff around it um, but basically the goal is to keep the dye moving and to, you want the wood it's not soaking wet here but it's it's still damp um, because if it's dry and you put the dye on, it's just going to soak it right up and make a line. Um, so basically you just want to keep the dye moving at all times. Um, and that way you won't get any of those lines. And just work your way um, around it as many times as you need to. And if you get kind of a spot where you're too dark, you know, like right here. Right here actually right now is, is kind of dark. You can take your rag, get a little bit of water on it. You can kind of, you know, rub however you want to, and it will take off, you know, some of what you got there. It won't take off the green very much because it's set, it's dried overnight and it's set. But you can go around and clean it up like that to kind of make sure you get that the burst effect how you want it to. And so I'm going to do that a few more times probably, but it's getting there. And it looks kind of rough right now because it's dry, more dry. But once you get it wet, like it's going to be with a lacquer, you can really start to see the, the color and stuff come out in it again, which is kind of hard to see with the... And I'm going to try and get over here a little bit. You can really start to see everything coming back out again. And so that is how you do a burst with dye.